Hello and welcome to this tutorial where we take a look at PDF and binary inside of HL7 messages. We can see in front of us I've got a PDF and a HL7 message and this HL7 message, if I load it up inside of HL7 soup, you can see it has an embedded PDF already put inside it. It's base64 encoded like they always are inside of HL7 messages. So there's a little trick that we can do to verify this inside of HL7 soup. And if I actually right click on that message, I can now go down to view document and we can see it's loaded up that PDF. So it just enables us to view the contents of that HL7 message PDF. Okay, so we're going to do all sorts of things with PDFs and binary files inside this tutorial. But let's start by taking our HL7 message that we've got and extracting out that PDF and putting it into the file system. So to do that, we'll create a new workflow. I'll load up integration host and I'm just going to create a new workflow. And we're just going to set it to listen on a port for us. So we're going to listen on port 22222, we'll get that default. We're listening for HL7 messages and we just need to give it a message template. I always like to do that. I'll just use one of the sample ones. We'll use an R01 because that normally has an OBX inside of it. Great. Okay, so we've got the message coming in. We now need to write out that file. And to do that, I add another activity and I'm going to convert this to a file writer. And now I just have to write out, give it a file name actually to write out. So that was in the PDF directory and I'm going to put it into an output directory and I have to give it a file name. I'll just call it mypdf.pdf uh, yep. from the HS message. Actually, let's do that and put it in the file name to make that a bit unique. So the message control ID, I'm just going to shove that into the mypdf so that way we're always getting a unique file name. And we're wanting to write out just that OBX value, but to do that, we want to select the message type as binary. Now that will take care of the fact that it's base64 encoded because when it's written out to the actual disk, we want that to be a proper binary file. Delete the default binding there, we don't need that. What we want to do is we want to grab that OBX5. So here we have the OBX5, drag that in, and great, that's going to grab that OBX5, write it out to us. Let's give that a try. Probably got that right. So it's running, we've just got to send it the message. So I was listening for 2222, so I'll select that and we'll send straight to that. Okay, we've sent, we can see it's come through. And if I refresh the logs, we can see it's written it out to the file with that data. Great, let's actually go and have a look at it. Great, it's created the output directory for us and here's my PDF put in place. And very good, looking good. Okay, great, so now we've got that working. Why don't we do something a little bit different? Let's imagine we've got an HL7 message coming in, just a standard one. Let me just load up the editor. I'll show you what I mean. Use one of the samples. Let's say every time an HL7 message comes through, we've got to append our PDF to that. So let's look at how we might do that. Okay, so I'm gonna do that on another port. I'll just create a new workflow and we're gonna listen on port 2223. I'll make it so when we're sending, we're sending it to port 2223, great. Okay, so the message comes in and we want to append in a PDF, right? So I'm going to add another step to this and I'm going to do it via running code. We've got our code activity. I'll just delete that, the sample code that comes with it, and we are outputting a binary. Okay, so now we've just got to give it some code and I can go to the code editor to do that and it's C sharp code. We get all the IntelliSense and everything else, but to make this video a little bit faster, I'm just gonna paste in some code I already have. Let me explain this to you. We've given it a file name. We're just reading that PDF file that I showed you earlier. We are reading in all the bytes. We've got it as a byte array. And then here we're converting it to a base64 encoded string with a no formatting option. We don't want it to put in line spaces for us. And then we're going to set its value as this activity's message. Okay, pretty straightforward stuff. We'll give that a try. Okay, so now we've got that writing out. That's going to be the output of this activity. We've actually got to get that now into that incoming message. And what we'll do is we'll just send that on after we're done. it. And I think what we'll do, just to make our life a bit easier, is we'll send it to that other connection that we've already created that's listening on port 22222. 
Okay, so we've got our H7 message. By default, it's already bound to this incoming message. So that's easy. We've just got to append in a new line. I'm going to do that via transformers. And I'm going to add in an append segment. This is just one of the many ways we might want to add it, but it seems pretty logical. I'll chuck in an ODX. And I'll just put five. So we want the ODX five. And I can just put in insert activity message. It means it's binding to one of the activities and I can bind to the sync value from the run code. Okay, easy. Okay, I think that should actually do the trick. Let's give that a try. So I hit save on this. And now if I hit send from here and I'll send this, so no PDF in the message at the moment. And I'm gonna pass it port 2223. We pass that through, it's sent. It received it onto port 2223. And if I look at the logs, it's picked it up. It's run the code on it and it's added it into that HR7 message, which is then sent here. And we should have received it with the HR7 message in it. Great. Okay. That's looking great. Sorry, not with the HR7 message in it, with the PDF message already embedded in it. Everything's looking really good. In fact, I actually quite like viewing it inside of the HR7 soup editor when we're doing this. And that way, it, this is just another view of, of the client. It's nothing special other than when we view the logs and I expand them, we actually view them inside the HR7 soup editor. And that's really, really helpful. Okay. Now I want to show you just a quick gotcha when you're working with this, uh, which is if I now go and try and view the document, I'm going to get this little error message. This document was truncated. Okay, this is because I've got the logs set up in my system to truncate down the messages when they go into the logs. This is to stop my logs getting too big. Okay, so if I wish to try and load it anyway, like it's offering, I'm just going to get an error. It's not going to work. We don't need to worry about that too much. What we have to do is fix it so we can always see those messages. That is if you want to, of course. Okay, so I go to integration host and I'm just going to quickly change the message logs. Uh, at the moment, we've got, you see this limit of 103 bytes on my system. I'm just going to up that for zeros in there. Okay, now we've got a 10 meg message that's allowed. Terrific. Okay, so we've allowed that. I'll just resend that message again and we'll try it again. So I'll do the same message. And hit send, get over to the integrations. And now if I refresh this list, we look at the second item instead, we can now see it's come through. And in theory, it won't have truncated it. So if I hit view document, boom, okay, working. Fantastic. And you can actually see that inside of the HR7 message itself. You'll notice this one's, well, you can see it's visually truncated. That's just done to keep it from being too noisy on the screen. But if we look back at that previous one, we've got our visually truncated, still visually truncated, but it still shows the end of it. Look, it says this log was truncated to this number of bytes. That's, that's the number of bytes that we had in our logs. That's why that previous one failed. Okay, but from now on, that's up to you whether or not you want to set that. It does use up more disk space, so keep that in mind. Okay, so we've got that running. Oh, I was going to show you another way. I'm going to alter this one. This is our port 22231. So that was using the run code activity. Actually going to, oh, I'll tell you about something you were going to ask me. This is what people will ask me. How do I put the file name so it grabs it from a specific one? Okay, so, because obviously you probably don't want to put the same file in every single time. The easiest way to do it actually would have just been to, if I had a transformer, oh, I probably want to have a sample message so that it, it knows what to pick up. And let's just say it was always going to pick up a particular file name. So let's just assume it was actually the one with, say, the MSH, or not the 7 in it, or the, the 10, the MSH 10 in it. Okay, so to do that, I am just go to the Transformers of the Run Activity, and I take the MSH 10, and I drop it there. Okay, by doing that, I have created a variable called message control ID. I'm going to copy that. Okay, and now in that code, if I go back to it, we could do here make it a bit more visual for you I get for that so if oh, that's the nicest way of doing that I'll just put a string for value and we could have gone workflow instance dot get variable and then inside there I put the name of the variable I just created okay and so that's going to get the value that's stored in that message control ID which it was already extracting from the message and now I can literally just put that to my message so it would probably be something like I should have just used the other dollar sign syntax but that's not the point okay so now it's going to get the file called whatever the message control ID of the incoming message was and it's going to grab that and it's going to put that into the, the file name okay relatively straightforward 
I won't actually run that because, well, I don't have a PDF with that file name, but you get the point. Okay, do I wish to discard? Well, yes, I do, because I don't want this at all now. I'm going to get rid of that run code activity, and we're just going to simplify things down here. Instead of using of a run code activity, I'm actually going to do it inside the workflow a little bit tidier, but it kind of depends on your workflow as to which one's going to suit. But I'm just going to add a code transformer. And I want that to happen before I append it in. And I'm going to edit that code. And really, I think I just want the same code. So I'm just going to copy that. And we're going to do pretty much the same thing, except we're no longer sending the activity message because that would be setting, well, the send activity transformer back to this value. That, that's really not what we want. I'm going to put it into a variable. So I can get rid of all this. And it is just workflow instance dot set variable and it needs a name i'm just going to call it pdf okay so now we're reading in that pdf putting it into a byte array base 64 encoding it and putting it into the variable called pdf nice and easy so now if i look at my pdf bit here i'll just delete that original binding we don't need that anymore and i'm going to now go insert variables and look, it's actually parsed out that c sharp code and it's worked out i created this variable called pdf and I put that in place. And now we're just reading from that instead. Okay, let's give that one a try. Back to HS7 soup. I'll do it from a different message this time so you can see I'm not using any trickery. And hit send. Okay, across my integrations, let's have a look. I was on to this one. Refresh. And here's our new message. And the PDF has been added. And once again, if I just double click, it should all view nicely. It does. Great. Okay, so that's two ways of adding it in. So now let's look at a different way. Let's say we had PDFs being created and we could want to create an HL7 message every time a, a PDF is dropped into this directory, right? So we've got our output directory. Every single time a PDF is put into here, why don't we pick that up and put that into an HL7 message? That's a relevant scenario that you might encounter. So let's just create a new workflow for that. Okay, we'll set that as a directory scanner, and we need this directory. We're going to scan this directory for any incoming PDF files. PDF files, and we're going to pick those up, and they are coming in as binary. That's what they are. Don't need a message template for binary, because, well, let's be honest, we can't pass that. So, add another step. And now we're going to pick that up and we're going to send that. No, let's not send that. Let's just write that out to a file with HL7. Okay, let's do that. I'll put it into the same directory because we are only picking up PDF. So if I put it into this one and I'm just going to call it the, well, the incoming file name. So I can go into variable, the directory file scanner name, dot HL7. Okay, so now it's writing it out as an HL7 file. We just need to build that HL7 file, right? So I'll, once again, I'll take advantage of these sample templates, but you'll probably have your own format, what have you. That's a nice one. That one's a good sample template. It's pre-populated with dates and the workflow instance ID. It hasn't got us anything like the patient or anything else like that. I'm assuming you're probably going to have another step here where you're going to probably call, I don't know, call your database with that database query or an HTTP service, web service, that kind of thing, and get the additional data that you need to populate this HL7 message. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to keep it blank to keep this short. So we'll assume that you've gone and populated all those things. And then we just need to add in that incoming PDF and put that into the OVX. So we need to add that into the OVX file. And all I do is say insert activity message pointed at that incoming PDF file that we picked up. And that should do it. So that looks good. Let, let's try it. Okay, so I'm going to hit save and close. It's going to start running. Oh, look, it's already picked up those three. Oh, look, it's already created our three HL7 files. Let, let's give those a try. I'll just double click on them and take a look. And sure enough, here is our blank HR7 message, PDF is embedded, right click on it and go new document and boom it's picked it up and it's processed it. Okay so that was a bit of a, a messier tutorial than we'd normally do but I wanted to show you all the sort of different techniques of, of handling PDFs and also any binary file that you might have that could have been the same potentially for uh, RTF documents that you need to embed inside of your message. I guess probably worth saying if it was an RTF document the only real difference is I, you mostly don't do it as a binary. You just do it as a, as a text message type instead. 
Other than that, if you've got any questions, please contact HR7 Super Support. You'd also be doing me a great favor if you like, subscribe to these videos. You're welcome to interact in YouTube as well. Leave us a comment. And don't forget, of course, to download the integration host or HR7 Soup trials. Uh, free to get going and you could trial this out to make sure it's the right solution for you. Thank you.